Today's video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. You can save 8% on your total order if you use survival at checkout, truetechtools.com. Also supporting today's video is EcoFlow. I just recently did a review video on the EcoFlow Delta 2 Max, which is 2400 watts of crazy power. You can check them out at EcoFlow.com. And right now, EcoFlow has some of the best sale prices of the season going on right now during December of 2023. So be sure to check them out. Now let's go ahead and get started with the video. What's going on guys? So we have got us a old beer cooler here that we're bringing some new life to. So what we've got is an old R22 system here that was leaking. The installers came out, put a new evaporator coil in it, and my job's come out here and finished the conversion up. So luckily uh, they had already taken the compressor out for me, chopped it here, unscrewed uh, it there on the flare fitting because you don't really want to do it on the rotolock fitting unless you've got a new seal for it. Flipped the oil upside down, threw it into the container down here so I'd know how much was in it, which you see that mineral oil doesn't look all that tempting there. This thing's had several leaks over the years, as you can see right here, it was recharged several times. So they finally got the authorization to replace the evaporator and that's what was done here just a little bit ago. As you can see, some of the equipment's a little bit uh, tired, and uh, but some of it's still running, surprisingly. So what we got going on right now, uh, what I did when I first got here was just went ahead and cranked my valve in all the way. That way I was open to the compressor, went ahead and filled up my pan here in my little dedicated bucket that I use for oil, whether uh, recovering, whatever measured it up to about the same area the other one was, pumped it into the system with that suction valve, like I said, cranked all the way in. That way it would shove right into the compressor. Once that was done, went ahead and backed it out and it just cracked it so most of it was pulling on the system. Put on in the uh, vacuum hoses there and now we're pulling the vacuum on it, which right now we're kind of twiddle dinking here. Come on, give me some light. So right now we're kind of twiddle dinking here because uh, you got so much refrigerant that's gonna be boiling off in the receiver right there and in the compressor. I mean, obviously the oil's gonna have some refrigerant stuck in it. So there's gonna be some residual oil in that receiver. That's just a guarantee. Generally one change nowadays is enough to make the system run. Uh, this system here has a low pressure cutout, which I believe it has a thermostat on it. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, it looks like that's just uh, for pump down only, which means the thermostat should be doing a job. Do not believe this had a defrost clock on it, which it is what it is. We're just gonna use what they had, so if it worked before, it should work again. This is gonna be your start components here. Yep, all of them still look uh, a little tired. But otherwise, I'm not really seeing any defrost clocks at all. I asked about that before I got here, and he said it was off to the side. <clears throat> but I'm not seeing any. Actually, none of them have defrost clocks unless it was upstairs. So we kind of bogged out around 2000 there. Let's go ahead and change this oil. It's been neat and changed for a little while now. It's pretty easy with this pump. It's one-handed. go right into the pail and it don't take a whole lot of oil which is why you can change this oil pretty quick and fairly inexpensively because it doesn't hold a lot of oil so works out rather well all right put us right at the top there looking good we're back together here and see if we can get a little bit better <clears throat> We are holding right in there at 2030, so we haven't raised a whole lot. Let's go ahead and see if it does any better now with uh, some better oil on it, because that definitely should make a difference. We'll open that gas ballast back up and see what we get now. Kind of going the wrong way. So we'll go ahead and let that speed up there. It's kind of slow on startup, trying to save battery power as it goes. 
which uh, these batteries weren't very happy with the cold weather. Okay, so they've got a new evaporator in here. I do not see anything in here for defrost clock. They reused the existing line set and just tied onto it. So uh, there's the thermostat. Looks like it's set for about 32, 34, which is pushing it. I'm assuming they're hoping they're going to get off cycle defrost. So if it worked before, hopefully it works again. Guess we'll uh, let that deal with the uh, powers of B that did the quote. Let's see if we can get in there and get to that TXV. All right, there's TXV. I'm reaching around the back side. If you can move it like that, it's not tight enough. So we need to take that apart and tighten that up. Okay, they cut that with snips or something. That's enough to cut your finger wide open right there. That's sharp. You gotta be careful not doing stuff like that. Chances are it was the helper that did it because I know the guy that normally installs it does really good work. So unfortunately, you gotta double check their work. That's why we usually have the service guy a lot of times follow it up because we're gonna have fresh eyes and we're gonna look at things like this and get it done so that uh, hopefully we don't have problems with super heat stuff like that after the fact. Because you figure once they put this money into the coil, they're gonna expect the compressor to continue to run even though it is old. And if we're flooding back because it doesn't think it's cold enough, that's something that could happen. All right, I see why it's loose got it on that. You can't do that. That needs pulled back into the unit a little bit further so that it's actually flat. But not a big deal. We'll get it fixed. What we ended up doing is moving it back here. Now you've got good contact with that bulb and it's not moving no matter how hard I push. It's not moving. So now we'll go ahead and reorganize this uh, lead going back to the head re-insulated and then it won't have, you won't have to worry about it getting nailed by somebody in the cooler with you know people are throwing things up here and we'll smash some of those finger cutters back down that uh, somebody freaking ripped off just fold that over there's no reason for that that right there is now a razor blade to cut somebody's fingers off you're gonna do it use a uh, pair of snips and brown the edges that's that's just gonna cause people to get more cuts like that right there and there. All right, what we ended up doing, putting in about a pound, 0.3 in there. Charge just a pound. I mean, we ain't talking a bunch here. It was enough to get it out of a vacuum because, you know, as you've seen, I was pulling off the suction only. There's no solenoid valve on this. We basically fed it through the suction, which is gonna go up to the evaporator and come back. It's not gonna just set in here in liquid form in the compressor. We just got enough in there that now we can hook onto our high side. And I was hoping that, you know, by keeping things sealed up, we'd have less leak points. You've got issues there with these valves possibly leaking. You've got problems with that one there leaking. All these things, I think, are contributing to a slow evacuation. Uh, our sight glass back there does show purple. So it does appear that, you know, it even thinks that it's dry. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's had a low pressure switch to shut it off when it got too low. But that's where we're at right now. So we're gonna go ahead and get our high side hooked on there. We'll finish charging the rest of it in liquid. As you see, we're at 75 PSI there. So it did positively pressurize that side. Hose has moved a little bit, so we've got a little bit here. So we're gonna go ahead and kick this thing on and we'll start charging it up. Actually, let's go ahead and start dumping some into the liquid side now. We'll finish charging it in. Let's go ahead and get about two and a half pounds, three pounds in here and then we'll go ahead and kick it on after that. Disconnects right up here. I put our gauge on here. I wanted to see how good our oil is. As you can see, we're at 54 microns. So our oil should be good for one more. Okay, we'll go ahead and stop that there. Yeah, it does appear that we do not have a solenoid. I didn't see any wires running. We can look at our liquids side glass over here. Start adding a little bit more to it here slowly. Evidently, this is a pretty hungry little hippo. Got a decent sized little receiver for all the bigger the system is. We are finally pull our sight glass back here. You can see the purple is nice and dark. It's dry. So the thing is, we finally hit solid. Now you add 
7 pounds times 15% comes in about a pound. So we're going to go ahead and add about another pound here, and that should give us plenty. That way we know we've got it full for all conditions. We need to get the core tool removed there, and uh, we're just about there. Head pressure don't look too out of line since we put adding liquid. And then we can start checking our superheat. Well, as I figured, the gauges aren't reaching up here, so I did get me some Testo probes now, so I'm able to do my testing with my phone uh, remotely right at the unit, which makes it nice. There's a decent spot to clamp there. We're below the last of the manifold uh, lines coming into it, so it should all be close to mixed about that point. Normally, you want to be somewhere along by this uh, the bulb which in this case here, I did get that all cleaned up and now let's uh, protect it away from getting hit. So no uh, capillary tube from the bulb hanging or anything like that. We do got her set right around 30, 34, which we're gonna raise that up some here. Definitely when you're trying to go natural heat frost. I've got some screenshots of the super heat. It uh, started dropping down to about two degree area. So we started to crank it in a little bit. And last I checked, it was about six and a half. So we're going to uh, double check it here and then uh, we'll see where we're at. Just got her to 8.5, so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing put back together. And it seems to be holding there. Definitely don't wanna leave anything behind. As always, guys, you can get all your Testo tools, any kind of tools you're looking for, True Tech tools, save me off most everything with promo survival checkout. There's links down in the bottom below on some of the most common tools that I use, so you can always check those out. Okay, it looks to me that we're right down to 35 degrees, which is about where that was partially set at. Let's go ahead and click this thing and see where we're at. Let's take her up about 30, 36 area and we'll see how that does. See if she shut down, it's kind of hard to tell. I hate to rapid cycle it because there's no contactor down there on that thing. It literally is powering it directly to it. So let's go ahead and get our stuff cleaned up and let's go downstairs. I have been liking this bag so far. It's not too overly heavy. MB5B, I showed it last uh, video or two. I keep my probes here on the side, which is kind of sweet also got my pressure one in here too and my uh, door jam and then my gas pressure test one is down in here too my dual manometer the uh, 510i it uh, does a really good job and I got my basic hose there and then I keep my meter on the other pocket I haven't overstuffed it jumpers and stuff over here on this side got my lockout there these are switchable. You can put these pockets uh, inside these pockets. Same thing with this one over here. You can take them out and change those. This here pops out. This whole back plate pops out. So it's pretty slick. You got big old monster pocket here on the front. Another zipper dipper there. Another zipper hopper hopper there on there. Lots of room for everything. And then on the back here, you can unhook and remove these uh, straps. And then you got a bag spot back here for your uh, iPad or whatever. And then another pocket up here, which is where I keep my markers and stuff at, which that away here so we don't forget it. But all right, it still hasn't shut off yet. I'm running 202 on head, it's dropped quite a bit. Check our side glass, see if it's still full. Side glass is still full and it's nice deep purple. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and valve off and then we're gonna go ahead and get, maybe turn that up a touch because we were 35 degrees in there. If you're not gonna have a defrost uh, clock on it, you really need to not run it crazy stupid low. Okay, we got everything tightened up. We're gonna go ahead and spray it for leaks just in case. Let's go upstairs and see if we can turn it up a little bit. It's, uh, I think it's getting probably too cold in there. Well, I just turned it up some, almost about 38, and it's still not shutting off. 
This is why you replace everything and not just some of it. I'm gonna turn it up high enough that it should definitely shut off because at this point, all I know may not even shut off. Who knows? All right, I had to turn it all the way up to almost 42 area. That thing to come on or shut off. Well, you've got a knob here on the side which says number seven and it goes up to number 11. Of course, it goes down to number one. Well, they didn't put anything inside here, so I'm assuming one means tighter tolerance. This is one of them ones, you know, basically you got a further spread between it to give you that natural defrost of what might be maybe what they're doing. What sucks is you don't know when it's going to come back on otherwise. So, yeah, 30. There's a 10 degree difference there. Take her down tighter, say to number three. here clicking okay it's a little tighter yeah I guess we'll just set it on seven like they had it we'll set it around 40 see what they get I mean uh, my feeling is it should replace the dad along with a lot of the other stuff I can't be held responsible how things work when I didn't ever look at this stuff this is one of the troubles you run into sometimes and once you touch it it's all on you that's what's Kind of troublesome. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and set her about 38. Let's see where it's at. If it's too cold. I mean, you've got kegs in here. Everything in here is alcohol except for the pop. The pop's gonna break. Uh, probably right around 31. Uh, the alcohol is gonna be able to go a little bit colder, but you've got your kegs in here. So you want them cold, so you've got a mix of both. I guess, you know, they should know their own cooler. So if that temperature gauge worked before, it should work again. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at that, note it on my paperwork. I'm just here to do the startup. And as far as my parts done, superheat is set correctly. The system shuts off, uh, which you gotta go down to make sure. And uh, that wraps my stuff up. Let's go downstairs. All right. It is, condenser fan's not running. I think, I don't think the compressor's running. It's warm on top, which that means it's been off for a little bit. Okay, well, let's get things cleaned up and we'll see if it comes back on before I leave. The low pressure switch, it's set at cut in about 32. So they could be using that as part of their defrost system. You can do that too, so that it only cuts in once it gets above like say 38 but you better have her set up perfect. And that's not, that's not uh, what I was asked to do. And I'm not going in that deep when you're told you have to get this done quicker than what they originally quoted. I feel a vibration, but I think it's these units over here. It came back on, we got everything cleaned up. All the caps are on, everything's good to go there. Don't think we're forgetting anything. Got our oil picked up. One box, take that with us. But short of that, I think we're good to go. I'm gonna go out and double check that cooler. See where the temperature's at. Sprayed it down. That's not mine. I didn't put that in there. I've already on a got After that sprayed down, don't see anything. I'm not gonna scan the leak detector just because there's so much crap down here in the air as it is. I'm good. Assuming that's accurate, or 30-ish. Right in there, about 38, 39. They had it a little lower than that earlier. We'll set it at 35 and see what happens. That way, you can say that I definitely should have been able to stay under 40 no matter what. They can adjust it from that point. So, let's wrap it up, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe, hit the thumbs button, check out some of those playlists that I put in the beginning there. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.